Fernando. Okay, everyone, please pay attention. So in today's lesson, we want to try to remember how to solve quadratic equation. I'm sure a lot of us know how to do that, but we might have one or two people who need to be reminded. So we will be able to test with one or two exercises. Um, the second part, just like you investigated the graph of inverse, we are going to investigate the graph of quadratic functions. So I've designed something that will automatically appear on the model by 9.40. I want to believe between now and that 9.30, I think I'm programming for 9.30, I scheduled it for that time. I want to believe between now and then we'll be done with this part and I will give you a summary note of parts of the quadratic function. So you just stick that into your notes rather than copy, copy, copy. And uh, then you can start your investigation. While I will continue with our polynomials, you can do your investigation because the due date is Monday. So you can spend the class on the investigation, and if you are not able to complete, complete it at home. But the due date is 6 p.m. Monday sharp. No extension. Henceforth, I'm not going to give extension, especially when I'm sharing feedback anymore. Okay? Thank you. All right. So the first thing, what can anyone tell me about a quadratic equation? When I say quadratic equation, what can you say? It doesn't have to be it's exactly what I want here. Yes. The highest power is 2. The highest power is 2. Highest power on the... On the... What's it called? On the... I don't know what it's called. You just say the highest power is 2. That's not a complete meaningful statement. Although I already understand what they're saying, <coughs> but you're not communicating. The highest power on the what? The variable. On the variable. Okay, the highest power on the variable is 2. Any other thing? Yes, sir. The coefficient of the highest power is not 0. The coefficient of the term containing that uh, highest power is never 0. Yes, any other thing? Has everybody heard of quadratic before? Quadratic equation? Then you should be able to say something. Yes, what else can anybody tell us about it? Yes, sir. There will be two roots because of the highest power. Do you remember what we did that says that? What, did, what, what do we call that? We did something in complex number that tells you that. What is that called? Don't open your book. Do you remember? Okay. Find out, tell me later. I'll remind you of the statement, I just need to know what it's called. We wrote it. Every polynomial of degree n has n root. We talk about it in the root of complex number. So that is why when something is power 2, you must have two answers. When it is power 3, we must have three answers. When it is power 4, we should have four answers. When it is power 5, you have five, uh, five answers. So if only one or two are available, it means others are complex, complex numbers. Yes. What else can you tell us about quadratic? Yes, sir. It's in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. It's in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where a can never be zero. Others are welcome to be zero, we don't care. But a can never be zero. It can be solved by how many ways? Quadratic equation can be solved by how many ways? Which ways do you remember? The quadratic formula. The quadratic formula? Completing, Completing the square method? The regular linear way. Factorization method. Let's one more. Start with a G. I graph. And solve by graphical method. You plot the graph, you find where it crosses the x-axis, that's the solution. So there are four different ways you can solve it. And if it doesn't touch the graph, if I'm trying to solve it and my quadratic is either this way, or this way, it doesn't touch. Of course, if you have this, this is the solution, isn't it? But if I have this, what does that say about the roots? They are complex. That's why it never touch. It means the rule root does not exist. OK. Now, we have idea. So it's good. We are going to. I don't want to, let, let me give you an idea, let me give you a family tree that I gave these guys during the polynomial 
class. So we know where uh, quadratic belongs to, and that's the royal family. We trace it back to their ancestors, if I may use that term. Expressions, mathematical expressions. Expressions, we can talk about them based on two things. Okay? Based on the number of terms and based on the degree. Degree has to do with power on the variable. Highest power on the variable. Based on the number of terms, if it has one term, we call those expression monomials. Two terms binomial, three terms trinomial, multiple terms polynomial. I'm not sure if I draw this properly or the other way. Again, expression. Just please listen. There will always be time to either write later or draw later. So just try to understand what the problem with some of you. Why you are not able to respond when questions are asked is because when the information was being given, you are always writing. So you don't even listen. You don't, it doesn't go into that permanent memory space. So you can talk about the expression based on number of terms and based on degree. Degree means highest power. By number of terms, if you have one term, then so the descender of this path, okay? Just like they say, oh, some people like origin of human being is Africa, then people move to different parts of the globe, then based on the weather condition, then we start changing the color of our skin and all that. And they say, oh, these people will be called Asians, these people are Europeans, something, something like that. Even though we have leaders who don't have sense and try to divide us, unfortunately. Monomia. So technically, we are all cousins. Hi, cousin. <laughs> She's wondering what is he talking about. I'm not your cousin, dude. <laughs> You're my cousin. Deal with it. According to human race. Okay. So you have monomials, binomials, trinomials. Talking about mono, bi, tri. Talking about num uh, the number, right? Mono is one, bi is two, tri is three. So you talk. This means something like two x or minus four p. These are monomials, one term. We talk about binomial, we talk about two terms, so maybe x plus y, a plus b, two plus one. No, two plus one is just one. Two plus x, for example. Okay, and talk about trinomial, it means three terms. Even the format of a quadratic is a trinomial, provided none of them is zero. Am I making sense? And it continues. So what we are studying right now is called polynomial. It's like the generalization of all this many times. That's what the HL class is doing right now. For degree of, uh, of uh, expression, they also have children. So, if the degree is zero, that's a constant. So we can talk about a constant degree zero, so a constant like two. Do we all agree that two means two x to the power zero? So that's why we can say, oh, two can be regarded as that, you know, a member of that family, but with degree zero. If the degree is one, then you have a linear expression, something like two x plus y. Degree one means every time have a maximum of one power one. Maximum of power one. That's why when you write your y is equal to mx plus c, you say this is a linear equation or linear graph. Because your x is power 1, your y is power 1. You don't have power 2. If the degree is 2 quadratic, those are the ones we are talking about in this topic. Okay. So they come from a very large family, sort of. <coughs> so that is your ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay. Degree 4, degree 3, cubic. According to the IB syllabus, we are supposed to extend it to degree 4. Okay, the quadratic functions. So that's cubic.
and so on like that. Is there an R there? I think so, yes. So we'll be talking about three and four maximum for the IB syllabus. So today it's all about studying these guys, a quadratic what? So they're like grandchildren, imagine this, they're grandparents. These are their parents. Lovely family, isn't it? Lovely. Complicated family. Yeah, I know. But there's nothing we can do. It's their family. None of our business. <laughs> All right. Now, expressions are also different from equations. Is that you, Elsie? Okay, just checking. Expressions are also different from equations. Can somebody tell me what is the difference? Rita, do you know? Yeah. What is the difference? It. You don't have equals to in expression. Expression is just one side. Okay? Equation has two sides. That's when you can talk about the answer, the solution of the equation. You don't talk about that in expression. Okay? We'll discuss more about roots and solution later. Okay? Now, so when we talk about quadratic expression, we're just referring to ax squared plus bx plus c. But the moment we say ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to something else, like a number or a zero, then it becomes a quadratic equation. What happens when we now collect the like terms depends on what we want to do with the problem. Do you understand? So the first thing I want us to do is, how do we determine if this point, when, when do you say a point satisfies an, a function or an equation? Let's have someone else, not you or some specific people all the time. Determine whether the given point, there are so many things we can do with quadratic, but for now, I don't want to you know, jump too much. Determine whether this point, so does this point satisfy this function? Does this point satisfy this function? Carolina, what do you think that means? Insert the x value and the y value from the point into the equation, and if it's if it if it gives you the right value, then it works. What do you mean by right value? Like if it, if the y value is equal to the x value, then it's if the y is equal to the if, x. If if like the both sides are the same, then it's now right. you're talking. Why did you wait until I called you? That's what I want to hear. But why did you wait until I called you? What's the problem? You're not sure. You don't have to be sure. Nobody's sure about anything. I'm not even sure what I was going to say, but I had to come to work. You know, I'd rather I just sleep at home, right? But I don't get paid if I sleep at home. Nobody pays you for sleeping at home. <laughs> of course. Hey, do you understand what she said? If you put in the X and Y values, and the left and right make sense, you get something like 2 is equal to 2, which is something that makes sense. We all know that. But you put the left and the right, and you're getting, let's see. If you put x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 4, what do you get? What is this? Zero. Zero. So this side will be what? Five. But this side is what? Four. So it's 4 is equal to 5. No. No. That doesn't make sense. So once you get something that doesn't make sense, then it means it does not satisfy the function. That's all this is about. OK? And this is like getting an equation. If y is equal to 4, we just have to, you know, let's, so let's take one of this and one of this, all right? And the rest will be some practice. So let's put that here. Uh, let's see, okay, some problems. So uh, does, I'm going to rephrase it. Does 0 comma 4, Okay, satisfy because it's too long, so that's why I'm just being lazy. Satisfy the function y equals 2x squared plus 5. Listen again, in the practical form, can somebody tell me when you put this on decimals, what does this really mean? That 0, 0,4 satisfy this function? Think of it in a graph, in the form of a graph, yes? Who's speaking? Yes. Can it be y-intercept? Y-intercept, no. 
No, that, that's not. Zero point well, four is the y intercept, we know. But what does that, what are you trying to investigate if you want to check if it's satisfied? Are you raising your hand? It's a point on the graph. Is it a point on the graph? That's what it means. So if you plot your, this one now, it's going to look like this. What it's asking is, 0, 0,4, is it anywhere on the graph? <clears throat> Understand? And since we don't have left is equal to right, it means 0, 0,4 is not on that graph. Of course, 0, 0,4 exists on the xy plane, but it, the graph does not pass through it. As a matter of fact, 0, 0,5 is where it crosses, isn't it? <laughs> so you kind of have something like this. Uh, I'm not sure if it is this way or this way. It has complex roots, so it's not going to cross. Right? It has complex roots, so it's not going to cross. So it crosses that, but this is the point 0, 0,4. That's what this means. It does not satisfy it. OK? So satisfy, when you are working algebraically, it means you substitute and check if left is equal to right. But if it is on the graph, the interpretation is that that point is not on the graph of that function. Okay? All right. So to so answer this question, we just say uh, put, you can put, so different ways people will answer this. As long as you are convincing, it's fine. Some would rather put x and y together and get something contradictory, like we did in the explanation earlier. Some will put x and show that that y they have obtained is not the same y that is given. Do you understand? So it depends on you. So my point is, put 0, 0,4, or put x is equal to 0, y is equal to 4. So this is one way to do it. Uh, I don't know if I'm, what I'm writing, you understand. Put x equal to 0, y is equal to 4. Then you have 4 equals 2 times 0 squared plus 5, which means 4 equals 5. And this does not make sense. So And 4 is not, you can just cross it like, oh, 4 is not equal to 5. Okay. Uh, or you can say, oh, which gives 4 is equal to 5. Remember, this implies this, which doesn't make sense, right? Which uh, is impossible, something like that. You don't say it's, it doesn't make sense. Math might feel offended, which is impossible. Okay? So the conclusion is, hence, 0, 0,4 does not. The reason I'm doing this is not because you don't know how to do it, but how to communicate. That's why I'm writing this, to give you an idea of how to communicate. Does not satisfy the function. Okay. Some might decide to do it this way. Put x is equal to 0, then y equals 2 times 0 squared. Rita, can you see what I'm doing? No. Oh, sorry about that. Which is equal to 5, right? But what do you expect your y to become? 4. Four. You say, oh, but this is not equal to 4. Is that not? So then you conclude. As a result of this, 0, 0,4 does not satisfy the function. So this is how I wanted to communicate your ideas. OK? So let's do the second one here. I'll pick one question in number two. For each of the following quadratic functions, find the value of values. Value of values. It means you likely get one or maybe two. If you get one, there's a reason for that. We'll talk about that later. So find the value of x for the, for the given y. So for example, we can take 2a. Uh, y equals x squared plus, looks like I'm doing this easy one, right? So maybe I take two, E or F, choose one for me. E. E, okay. So <coughs> half X squared plus five over two X minus two. Of course, no IB question will say solve the quadratic equation. I don't expect that. But you're going to come across quadratic equation when solving problems. That's the reason to review this, okay? So what do we do first? Let's ask Rada. Ada, what do we do first? I give you this question. Don't look at the book. It's not in the book. What do we do first? We want to find x. Um, I'll input the y number 2. When y is equal to this, find x. So maybe I say find x. Say that again. 
Inside of, of instead of y. So this means that 1 is equal to half x squared, and it can be ready, minus 2. What do I do next? Quickly, I have five minutes to the investigation task. Ada said put y is equal to 1. That's what I've done. So what do I do next? Speak louder, please. Okay, so why do why are you doing that? Why do you need zero on the other side? She's she's making sense, but do you know why you are doing what you are doing? So what she's saying is we have zero equals half x squared plus five over two x minus two minus one. So that you have half x squared plus 5 over 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. The point is, why do you have 0? Why can't I keep the number here? Because normally, if I have 2x minus plus 1 is equal to even 4, you don't say bring the 4 here. You say take the 1 over there. Then you get 2x is equal to 5. So you can divide both sides by 2. But in this case, why do you insist on 0 here? Denise, can you help? Anyone? That's not the answer I'm looking for. I'm asking you for one. We're going to one million. Yes? You are still talking about how to solve. I'm not asking how to solve. Why do we always have that? Have you seen any quadratic equation being solved without having the format of equals to zero? Yes, sir. Are you trying to find the, the roots? Of course, we are trying to find the roots. So we have to put it equals to zero. That's the way it is solved. I'm not asking you how to solve it yet. But to solve a quadratic equation, a quadratic equation is always of which form? Yes? AX, AX, AX squared AX plus, plus BX plus, plus C equals to zero. Always in that form. That is the format. To leave it, but once you notice it is quadratic, you have to make sure you have equals to zero. Then you can talk about how to solve it. There are four parts to solving it, depending on the tools you have. If you have a graph of a software, you plot it in there. Equals to zero means when it crosses the line, y is equal to zero, which is the x-axis. So you pick that. If you are good with factorization, and if it is factorizable, you factorize. If it is not factorizable, use your formula method. If you want to stress yourself, use completing the square method. Does that make sense? So, well done, miss. Now, she has not gotten it up to here. Uh, King, do you have an idea what to do next? We are not solving yet, but it doesn't look like something nice yet. Because of what, Yanko? Um. It doesn't because look of the fraction. Because of the fraction. So how do we get rid of the fraction thing? Try. Move it towards the Speak right. louder, please. Move it towards the right. No, we're not moving anything to anywhere. We have just discussed as a class that we must have equals to zero. Moving something to the right is not it's going to you know go against what we agreed on. Do you mind dropping your pen? Sorry. You kind of act like this is none of your business. It's not a good attitude, sir. Yes? Carolina? Uh, you times the equation by two. You multiply every term by two to remove the fraction, to clear the fraction. Okay? So you multiply by two. You multiply through or throughout for each term. Depending on whatever grammar you want to use, you just know what you're doing. And of course, you don't have to write that. So anytime you are playing the fraction, you multiply by the denominator, you know, the LCM. So we multiply this by 2, what do we get? 1x squared. One x squared, which is just x squared. This, 5x. Five 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 and five this, six. minus 6. Then you can start solving. Okay? Who does not know how to factorize? Raise your hand. Everybody knows how to factorize. Okay, great. How do we factorize this? Okay. 
x squared plus 6x minus x minus 6. Because you have power 1, you don't need to go through the detail. When oh, you have okay. a monic equation, you write your factorization straight away. Okay. But if you have power that Open is other bracket. than 1, I'm done. Oh, sorry. I just finished. Thank you. If you have power 1, power 2, 3, sorry, you have a negative, whatever, then you can go through what it's about to tell us. But if you have this, please go straight into it's acceptable. All right? So, what about you? Uh, open bracket. Open bracket. X, X plus, yeah. Yes. Plus 6. Plus 6. And then minus 1. Minus 1. Does everybody understand this? If I'm asking if everybody understands something and you're waiting for someone to respond on your behalf, you are not deceiving me, you are deceiving yourself. That there is no way I will know what you understand until I give you a test. And there's no turning back when you have written the test. So if you do not understand how something is done and you don't want to talk, well, there's nothing I can do. Okay, so when this happens, Melody, what do we do next? Say that again? Either, Either x, plus x plus 6 equals to 0 or, or x minus 1. Can uh, Jensen tell me why? This is what she has. Then she said this. Do you know why? It's not just solving in this class. We need to know why we do some things. Let's Jensen try first. After Jensen. Uh, who hasn't spoken very well today? Ryan will try. After that, Marco will try. Oh, have you spoken today? So, yes. Okay, so Marco will be the next one. Jensen, quickly. Uh, any, if you don't have an idea, just say. So we don't waste time. Ryan? Um, because they're two separate. There are two brackets there, mm -hmm. so you, you should be able to like make one because of the other because of it. Okay, so let me ask you this. Because somebody once wrote it for me in a test. If I have 2x plus 1, I think it's from this class, equals to maybe 4. Yes or no, Ryan? Can I say this is equal to 4 or this is equal to 4? Yes, I think you can say that. Okay. So which means 2 times 2 is equal to 4. Does that mean 2 is equal to 4 or 2 is equal to 4? Because that's exactly what is happening here. Is 2 equal to, does, does any of this make sense? No. Do you understand? Yeah. That is why you can't say this. Or if you say, oh, the product of two numbers is equal to 12. So let's say this is number dot and this is number star. Are you saying we can now say either number dot is equal to 12 or number star is equal to 12? Can we conclude like that? No. Then we cannot conclude like this. Understand? Yes. So you see, most people know that from here, this is what you write. But maybe they don't know why we always write that. That's the reason for my question. So who is the next on the list? Marco, yes. So when 2 times multiply is equal to 0, one of the terms must be 0. That is the reason. When two numbers multiply and give you 0, then one of them has to be 0. Because you can only get 0 in situations like 2 times 0, you get 0. Or 0 times 7, you get 0. Even 0 times 0 is equal to 0. So all means at least one of them. Understand? So if you multiply two things, you get zero. Oh, either the first one is zero or the second is zero. Both is already in, includes both of the, uh, the, the either. So that's why we only focus on this format. That is the reason for this. But this is four, not zero. So you can't do this. Somebody did it for me in this class before. So this is the reason I'm asking these technical questions. They kind of sound irrelevant sometimes, but please, they are very relevant, okay? So that's the reason. And once we use that idea to break it into two, the rest is easy to solve, isn't it? So together, x is equal to? Negative 6. Or x is equal to?